Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Quick update video today. I've been hard at work behind the scenes on several projects, like my Queen LED Dig Uno I did a live stream about last week, and I've also been working on the server build, but also my thermostat project behind the scenes. So specifically about that thermostat project, let's uh, see what's going on and give you guys an update. So for instance, I've been working on a node red sketch, which already does a few things already. It takes in the temperature of several of these uh, Xiaomi sensors, and then based on an up and down hysteresis you can set per sensor, it switches the relay on and off. It also auto senses if it needs to be heating or cooling, or rather if the heat pump is in heating or cooling mode. And I've also programmed a pump on for if any of the relays are on, and an auto off delay for when no relays are asking for heat anymore. And last, I've already programmed a test slider in Home Assistant from which I can override the standard programming in the Note Red Sketch with maybe a different temperature you'd want to set in that room for that time. So this sketch is still a bit basic, but what it does now, it's doing well. And I want to expand on this and make it very flexible. For instance, I have a very large living room and kitchen which are currently being treated as a single room. But I've been experimenting and laying down sensors uh, spread out over the room, three actually, one on each side and one in the middle, and they can vary as much as one and a half degrees. But the room is divided in several uh, loops for the underfloor heating, so I could actually be more granular in setting the room temperature by using those loops individually. But I also want to build the reverse for that where I have one, two, or three sensors in a single room, and then I control the heating or cooling based on the average in the room. But that kind of comes to the base of what I want this to be, very flexible, but almost fully automated. And well, I have a lot more features I want to build into this. I also wanted to ramp up and ramp down, or ramp up and out with cooling and heating, so that you can potentially save energy for when it's not needed. So. These uh, Xiaomi sensors have been working really well, and I've actually been able to use the same one I use for room temperature measurement, for room humidity measurement, in my bathroom project. If you didn't see that video, you can, uh, uh, I think, well, no, no, there. You can check it out over there. But an issue did rear its head, and some people have been asking me in the comments and on Discord, Although I have weeks where these temperature sensors work fine, or especially the ESP32 bridge with Home Assistant works fine, sometimes Bluetooth still crashes on the ESP32, and that means it just doesn't read out Bluetooth anymore. The ESP32 keeps running, but you don't get any new values. So to combat that, I've written some code in my ESP Home Sketch, where it basically reboots every day at 4 o'clock at night, and since I've been doing that, I haven't missed a single value anymore. So, I'll update my blog post, and I'll have that linked in the description again, where you can have the ESP32 reset itself every 24 hours, 12 hours, whatever you'd like, and that should solve that problem for now. Of course, that's still an inconvenience for when you have the ESP32 doing other things, like lighting or something else, and, well, I do it at 4 o'clock at night, so you really don't notice it, but... I'm still hopeful that they'll fix the underlying code, because it's not so much ESP Home, it's more the Bluetooth drivers that are being used on the ESP32. And those just, well, they still need improvement. Some guys in my Discord also tipped me to these. These are also Xiaomi devices, but instead of having an LCD screen, these have an e-ink screen. And well, this one looks almost the same, and this one has a little bit different form factor and actually shows the time. But I've been trying to integrate these and they do use Bluetooth like the original one does also, but they must have changed the protocol or encryption or something else because these are still working fine and these I can't read out. So for now, if you just need a temperature and humidity display, these are great. These displays really, even, even looking at an angle, it looks like the protective foil is still on there, but that's just how an e-ink screen works. It's really great. But for now, you will not be able to use them with an ESP Home Bridge to Home Assistant. 
So I'm hoping they will decode that in the future, but you never know. So buy with caution, and if you want to use your sensors within Home Assistant, buy this one. I'll have everything linked in the description, but just so you know. I've also had some people who've been asking me about, did you test the Zigbee version? And while looking around for sensors, I initially uh, landed on this one because it had a screen, because that mostly resembles what the Evo home thermostats also have. In the end, that's not really that important. I can just see the temperature in a room in Home Assistant or Grafana or whatever. But still, these have Bluetooth, which I can link to ESP32s, which I have all around the home. And they use simple AAA batteries, which are also easy to replace. And the Zigbee version doesn't have a screen, and I think it's a nice bonus. But I also don't have any other Zigbee equipment in the house, so I'd have to set up a special Zigbee network for that, while I do have ESP32s. So, no, I haven't tested those. From what I've read, those work fine. But that's basically the reason why I went with these, and, well, I have no regrets. We have the current reboot issue, but... On day-to-day -day usage, I don't really notice it because they just always work and a reboot at 4 a.m. doesn't really bother me. So, yeah, still recommend it. So, that's kind of it for this quick update. A word of warning for the people following and maybe even waiting on this project. Eh, I have lots of projects going on and my time that I can spend on it varies between all those projects. And while I am certainly going to build this, I'm also known for my pre projects taking a long time. Um, so I'd be really happy if you guys followed along, but don't think this is something that will be complete next week or even next month. For instance, next month, the Ryzen 3000 series should be released, and then I will be spending more time on an update for my desktop and finally building that server. I have lots of components for that coming yet, so I might make a server update video too. And well, thanks for watching, I hope you guys will keep following along, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.